Hello everybody, in this video we are going to be um, discussing how discussing about gears. So this will provide an uh, introduction to gear and then we'll conclude uh, with how we would actually design a gear train. So all of us have probably seen a gear, so this I got it from the internet, a fairly nice animation. So these are known as spur gears. So you'll notice that the first gear is an external gear and if you'll notice the smaller gear is rotating at a higher speed and the larger gear is rotating at lower speed and then they seem to be transmitting rotation motion from one to the other. The one in the middle is known as a rack and a pinion. So basically you can think of the bottom gear as being like an infinitely long straight gear. And then the finally the one on the right is known as an internal gear. So essentially you can think about um, this rack kind of wrapping around and then kind of closing to form a kind of a closed loop to form the right one on the right. So we've already seen uh, all of these types of gears, uh, but there is more to the gear than what meets the eye. So before we actually proceed too much further, let's take a look at some of the important terminologies. Generally, when we talk about uh, gears, we talk about a gear and a pinion. So pinion typically refers to the smaller gear. So generally you don't want, uh, you typically wouldn't have the gears to the same size. So one is going to be a smaller gear, so that's going to be called the pinion, uh, and the one which is the larger gear is going to be called the gear. So basically when we do all the terminologies in terms of diameter and so on, we'll refer to it as the diameter of the gear and the diameter of the pinion. So you need to keep in mind both this. The next term that we use is known as the velocity ratio. Um, so this is basically the ratio uh, between the RPM, which is denoted by the small letters. So it's the ratio of the RPM of the pinion to the RPM of the gear. So as we mentioned before, the pinion is going to be rotating at a larger speed because it's a smaller gear. So if you have a 100 to, um, to 1 reduction, the pinion might be rotating at 100 RPM and the gear would actually rotating only at 1 RPM. Um, the velocity ratio is also the inverse ratio of the number of teeth in the gear to the number of teeth in the pinion. Essentially, if you multiply the number of teeth in the pinion with the uh, RPM of the pinion, that should be equal to the number of teeth in the gear times the RPM of the gear. So keep in mind, this is a bad convention, but the book uses this. Um, they've used capital N for the number of teeth and little small n for the RPM. I'll unfortunately continue to use the same uh, same convention. By the way, the book I'm referring to is the uh, Elements Machine Elements by Mott, Robert Mott. And if you have, or you're interested in learning more about this, you can go to the website, Roy Mech. Um, they have some tables that explain different characteristics of the gears and so on. So it's a nice thing to go look at. So the next question is, why would I use a gear? So if you think about some of the advantages and disadvantages, uh, of using a gear. So typically what happens is when you have a gear, um, they are low maintenance and generally smaller in more compact. So why would you not use a gear? So they're more expensive and result in large noise. So if you think about it, belts are usually the quietest um, system that, that can be used. Um, the other thing in terms of efficiency is neither um, an advantage or a disadvantage. Basically, spur gear efficiency is 98 to 99% and belts and chains kind of up, uh, achieve the same amount of efficiency if they were well lubricated. So now look at, let's look at gears in action. So this, you can think of um, kind of taking a closer look at the gear. So you'll notice something interesting here. So if you look at the points of contact, so the contact, uh, let's start here, begins here and then as we proceed, it kind of moves along this line and notice that the contact is continuously maintained. And all the new teeth that come in contact uh, kind of start contacting and then their contact remains uh, at this point and the contact continues to move along that uh, line. So gears use a special profile known as involute profile. And the law of, um, um, there is something known as the law of gears. It basically states if um, the line drawn perpendicular to the surface of two rotating bodies. So basically that will be um, 
So basically, if you draw like the normal to the two surfaces, and if uh, if the line drawn perpendicular to the uh, surface of two rotating bodies at the point of contact always crosses the center line of, con at, of contact always crosses the center line between the two objects at the same point the angular velocity ratios of the two bodies is constant so what does that mean so this blue line over here represents kind of the normal so this is one surface over here and this would be the normal of that surface uh, this is the other surface, that, so this would actually represent the common normal. And because the gears kind of maintain contact along the same line, this line is actually constant. So the line itself doesn't move one way or the other. That basically means that because of the involute profile, we're able to satisfy this gearing equation. And that basically means that the gear, um, the car velocity is constant. So you're basically going to have like a smooth engagement. So you're not going to have like a jerky engagement like this where one gear is rotating in constant one, this one kind of does like this, that's not. Uh, if, you're, if you don't have a constant input to output ratio, that basically means that the output will be jerky and we cannot actually use this gear very efficiently. So now we look at some of the nomenclature in the, in the gear. So the little circles over here are known as base circles. So that's basically this circle over here and this circle over here. So right now this um, gear doesn't have any clearance um, then the bottom is known as a base circle. So the base circle is where your involutes are actually formed from. The next one we'll be looking at is the tip circle, which is the edge. So this edge, so if you have this teeth, so this circle is the edge of the teeth. Similarly, this circle is the edge of this teeth. So this is known as the tip circle. And then finally, you have these two circles. Um, those are known as the, um, the pitch circle. So this circle over here and this circle over here. So essentially, you can imagine that the two gears can be represented by two little circles given by their pitch circle. So it's essentially as though the two little circles are in contact and then the RPM is transferred from one to the other. If you take a closer look. Um, if you look at the uh, line, so this is basically the kind of the common, um, um, so this would be the common, uh, excuse me this would be the line joining the center this would be the line perpendicular to it this arrow here represents the common normal at the point of contact so if you recall from back so this is basically the blue line along which the contact proceeds so this will be the common normal so you're going to have an angle between this which is denoted by the letter phi and it's known as the pressure angle so it's 20 degrees is the most common pressure angle and this pr pressure angle actually represents a um, uh, kind of the angle between, so if you think about calculating the torque that's transmitted, so that's going to be the perpendicular force, and this is the actual direction of contact, so this will angle kind of be the angle between the two. So re we refer to figure 8.8 .8 in the book, uh, if you need further information. So when you have gears, you need to basically make sure that the teeth basically engage. So I can't have a little teeth like so. Um, so if my gap is this big and my teeth is this much, so they're going to be kind of not seated with each other. I basically need to ensure that the gap that I have is the same size of the teeth. So this is ensured by a making sure that the pitch of the two mating gears are the same. So essentially pitch refers to how frequently the gears appear and that also represents the frequency of the gaps between the gears so they, if the pitch is the same they're going to engage nicely like this if the pitch is different they're not going to engage properly so you can think of the pitch being the spacing between adjacent teeth it's also a measure of the size of the teeth and basically the pitch needs to match there are three definitions of pitch uh, the first one is known as a circular pitch which is denoted by little p and the equation here is if you know the diameter of the pitch circle, so recall the pitch circle is the two circles um, along which the gears kind of engage. So then the formula for the pitch, um, circular pitch is given by pi d divided by n, where d is the diameter of the pitch circle. Uh, so the two gears, because d by n uh, would be constant, basically if you have the gear pinion would have a smaller diameter like so, and the gear would have a larger diameter, 
So your D or N would remain constant. So that's the definition. So you can use um, D and N from either the gear or the pinion and then you should get the circular pitch. The diametral pitch, note the spelling, it's spelled D-I-A-M-E-T-R-A-L, is denoted by capital P sub D. The equation for this is the number of teeth divided by the diameter. So this in some sense is the inverse. So if you kind of multiply the diametral pitch with the circular pitch, you should get pi. So you can take a look at this, the, like you multiply these two, this is n over d and this is pi d over n. So this d and n should cancel between them and the only thing you'd be left with is pi. Uh, when you use metric system, so the first two are basically the imperial or sometimes it's referred to as the British units, uh, more so it's usually in the US. Um, so the diametral pitch uh, and the circular pitch and there is a third thing known as a metric pitch which is used for metric module which refers to metric gears. Uh, metric module is given by D over N. So if you look at the dimensions of this, the M which is the metric module and PD are kind of inverse in terms of the dimensions itself. Uh, but because they are in a different units, when you multiply M and PD, you will get 2.54, which represents basically number of millimeters. Actually, this should come 25.4, my apologies. Um, that basically represents the um, number of, um, um, so this will be 25.4, that represents the millimeters to inch conversion. Um, so there are more gear parameters. For this, you can refer to table 8.1 or 8.8. .8. So essentially, if you look at the pitch, so you can go up, which you would reach the tip and then you go down, that's known as the addendum. So the addendum is the height of the teeth above the pitch circle, which is typically given as one over P, uh, one over capital PD. The addendum is the depth of the teeth, which is given by 1.25 divided by capital PD, or the diametral pitch. So the clearance is basically this gap. So if you put the other teeth over here, um, that's going to reach the same amount of as the addendum below here. So it's going to kind of come over here. So the C is going to be the difference between the depth and the A. Next we'll look at some of the other parameters that will be important when you're considering teeth. So the first one is going to be the outer diameter, which is like if you have, this is your pitch circle, your teeth kind of goes this much, you're kind of interested in the topmost. So how do we calculate that? Um, so we already know that this addendum is going to be A and based on whether it's an outside or an inside teeth, we'll have different formula. So for outside teeth, it's going to be two D plus two A and then it's going to be D minus two A for internal gears. Similarly, the root diameter can be calculated. And we have the whole depth, which is basically what is the kind of the hole in the teeth so that's going to basically be given by um, H, which is going to be A plus B. And then the working depth is basically how deep the teeth actually engage. So this is basically going to be two times A. Um, so the tooth thickness, this is basically um, how wide uh, are the, like, like, so if you have the gear like so, how wide is the thickness at the pitch? Um, so that can be calculated as well. It's going to be P over two which is going to also be equal to the teeth spacing. The center distance is going to be the distance between the centers of the two gears. So this is basically going to be half the sum of the two diameters. So essentially we're going to assume that they are engaging uh, or the two pitch circles are touching. So we can use the method to calculate the distance between the center. So if you have gears and uh, pinion, so it's going to be DG plus minus based on whether it's an internal or an external. And then the base circle is D cos phi. Um, this is not the same diameter as a root circle. So root circle is actually a little bit lower. Base circle is different from the root circle. Um, so now would be a good time for you guys to try out some sample problems. Uh, kind of pause the video at this point. Uh, so we're gonna try to determine the diametral pitch for the gear for the following uh, circular pitches, 10, five or 3.5. Uh, determine the circular pitches for 1, 2.5 and 64 inch inverse. Determine P sub D, the diametral pitch for the following metric module, 0 0.3, 10 and 25. And then determine um, the pitch diameter D for gears with 20 teeth 
uh, for diameter pitch of 1, 2.5 and 64. So I'd recommend that you actually pause this video and then take a look at this. Coming to the solution, so we can use p t sub times p is pi and then you'll get the following answer. So you'll get uh, the diameter pitch for 10 would be 0 0.314, uh, for 5 would be 0 0.628 and then for 3.5 would be 0 0.897. Uh, to calculate the circular pitch given the diameter pitch you can use the same formula uh, p d times p equal to pi and then so finally you can get these answers um, to determine the metric module um, so we already know um, that basically p d and d kind of represent the same unit but then you're going to be having a factor of 25.4 so you can actually use these numbers uh, and then we can basically calculate PD's, these numbers over here. Um, so if you are interested in calculating the diameter, so diameter we can actually calculate from the PD which is given to you and the number of teeth um, and then we can calculate um, um, the, the, diameter, the diameter as follows. So we can go a little step further. Um, so we want to calculate the outside and root diameter for external and internal gears, diameter pitch one with 40 teeth. So for external gear, um, so what is going to happen is your values are going to be D plus two A for the outside diameter. And then it's going to be, you can take the cosine to calculate the base diameter. So that basically gives n plus pd which becomes n plus 2 by pd which is 42 inches um, the um, the root diameter is minus 2b and then that becomes uh, n minus 2.5 divided by pd and then that gives me 3.7 uh, 37.5 inches for the internal gears um, the plus basically becomes minus so your do basically becomes d minus 2a and then the root diameter um, basically becomes uh, d plus 2b. And so we can calculate those similarly. And then d root is d plus 2b, which gives me this. Um, the next one we're going to calculate is the nominal face width. So like the face width kind of if you have the gear, so that represents how thick the gear is going to be. So if this is my gear, so it's going to be like how thick the gear is going to be. Um, typically, you kind of have an initial estimate. So the value you choose is 12 over PD. Um, so now I uh, encourage you to kind of pause this video and then try to calculate the nominal face width for gears with PD, the diameter pitch, 1, 2.5 and 64 inch inverse. So since F is 12 over PD, so you can basically do 12 divided by 1 will give you 1, 12 divided by 2.5 and 12 divided by 64. There are other parameters that will be useful. Uh, the other parameter is going to be the base circle diameter. So if you recall, the base circle is from where the involute profile actually comes out. So the formula for the base circle is given by D cos phi. So phi here is the pressure angle. The other formula is the gear contact ratio. So this actually represents the average number of teeth that are in contact at any time. <clears throat> so if you get a fractional number, that basically means um, you have one teeth and then kind of like part of the other teeth is engaged. So you typically want a minimum value of 1.2. The contact ratio is given in terms of the radius of the pinion and the gear. So like so, so this basically is uh, our outer diameter of square of the outer diameter of the pinion minus square of the base diameter of the pinion square root of that and then plus do the same thing for the gear and then minus c uh, where c is the center distance times sine phi so generally your center distance if it varies then the the contact ratio can be altered by changing the center distance basically if you make the center distance very large you can make your contact very small and then that's not good and then in the denominator, you have P cos phi, where P is the circular pitch. And then you can use these formulas here 
to actually calculate those values, the circular pitch. Um, we're going to use calculate this problem. Um, so assume P sub D, the diameter pitch is eight, the pressure angle is twenty degrees, and the number of teeth um, is so, uh, basically calculate uh, two gears with eighteen and sixty-four teeth, and then we're going to calculate the um, contact ratio. So again, at this moment, try to do this yourself. Okay, so these are the values then. The outer diameter is 1.25 inches. So this can basically, the outer radius is half the diameter. So recall the formula for the diameter. The base is basically dp cos phi by two. So this cos phi the whole thing by two. And so that becomes 1.057. Um, the gears, you can similarly calculate it as 4.125 inches and 3.7587 inches. The center distance is going to be um, NP plus NG divided by 2 PD, which comes to 5.125 inches, and then substitute back in the formula in the previous page, and then you'll get the contact ratio. So you'll notice the contact ratio is 1.66, which is actually larger than one, so uh, our gears are good. The next thing we're typically concerned with is interference. So interference basically happens when the tip of one of the gears or the pinion or the gear kind of hits the bottom of the other gear. So just basically what that means is that the pinion is typically is too large, i.e. the radius is, uh, the curvature is too large or the radius is too small. Um, so the ways to avoid it is basically you'll use table 87 to find the minimum number of teeth that can be used. The other methods, basically undercutting, modifying center distance, modifying gears are generally not recommended. So in our class, basically we recommend just going to table 87 and then finding the minimum number of teeth. So the other types of gears in terms of helical gears, bevel gears and worm gears, uh, I'd encourage you to look at the book and kind of just review it. Since we're not discussing in detail, so I just want you to get an idea uh, so there might be more like conceptual questions, but nothing in too much detail. So now comes the actual fun part, um, the actual gear design. So what will happen is you'll typically pick either like a spur gear, helical bevel gear, um, like for a worm and worm gear. So you basically assume the number of teeth is one. So the gears at mesh must be the same pitch. So if you want to flip the, dime, the direction of rotation, you can actually use what's known as an idle gear. Spur and helical gears operate on parallel shaft, helical, uh, while helical gears and bevel gears and worm and worm wheel can operate at perpendicular shafts. Um, teeth in the pinion should not cause interference, so refer to table 8-7. Uh, in general, the number of teeth in the gear should not be, should be less, less than 150, so if it's more, you might potentially need to use uh, idler gear, uh, excuse me, uh, two-stage reduction. So you want to avoid integer velocity ratio. This basically means that if there are integer velocity ratios, the same two teeth would end up being in contact with each other. So this is not good because it leads to additional wear. So it's recommended that you kind of like add or subtract a teeth. And so you can look at a section 8, 11 in the book, which kind of gives you more detail on what these are. So this is the actual design itself. Um, you could use potentially multiple velocity ratios to achieve the desired uh, actual final speed. Velocity is the ratio of speed of the, the final um, input to the output. So R, it'll be the output teeth divided by input teeth. So if you have gear trains, so you basically multiply the individual velocity ratios to get the final, um, final speed. So if you have two gears, it basically becomes um, VR1 times VR2. If you have multiple more than two gears, then you would need, um, because each of them flips the direction, you need to use the minus one to the A. So let's look at what it, it is to actually design a gear train at all. So I just simplified the gears, right? So basically assume there is a circle for the gear. Like, so this is one gear. So this actually has like teeth like so. And then this is the second gear. So this would represent basically the pitch circle of the two, or actually four gears in this case. 
So have an input shaft which is rotating at NA and then drives this gear with capital NA teeth uh, which is mated to a second gear B which is running at S little n sub b and then the number of teeth is n b and then you have this shaft connected so what that basically means is that the rpm of this gear like so would be equal to the rpm of this gear over here right they need to be essentially equal because one is driving the other uh, and then what happens is this is going to be driving this gear in the opposite direction like so so this ratio we can actually calculate so this over here this is known as velocity ratio 1 because this is kind of the first set and then this over here is the velocity ratio 2 and the overall ratio is going to be uh, the product of these two so if we think about writing this down um, so we can basically say that uh, so for just the first gear the velocity ratio is going to be nb over na which is capital nb over na which is equal to small na over nb so that's the velocity ratio one uh, and then similarly we can write the velocity ratio two this is, apologies so this should be velocity ratio two and so if you do this um, the final ratio that we are actually interested in is basically the product of these two so we are not really concerned about the individual values we are really concerned about what is the ratio between uh, what's going in here to what's coming out here so which is basically going to multiply this and this so you're going to go uh, vr1 times vr2 and so in doing that uh, basically because nb and nc are the same that value is going to be co common left out and then we'll be left with na over nd would be equal to this guy times this guy let's write that so in doing our design so what we'll basically look at is you'll be given this ratio so you'll be given a number saying that the input rpm is say thousand so this little gear is rotating a thousand and then this final gear you need to rotate it at say 10 rpm right so now basically what that means is you need to uh, do an overall reduction of a factor of 100 but you don't have to do all of that 100 within just this one gear so you could basically reduce um, basically if it's 100 you can do 10 here so you can do 10 here and then 10 here or you can do like uh, divide it any which way you want so 100 can also be written as 25 times 4 so you can do like 25 here and 4 here as long as you can kind of figure out a value of nb and na which will give you 25 and nd and nc which will give you 4 then you can basically solve this problem the problem mainly comes is because you need to ensure that na nb nc nd would be integers uh, so we would need to come up with a more intelligent way so we can't just randomly divide stuff and hope things work out because you can't actually have fractional gear so that's where the actual gear design challenge comes so one of the ways we'll do is we'll try to simplify all of these numbers and for the sample problems we'll basically write it in terms of nb over na and then nd over nc so the this is the basic procedure for selecting the number of teeth in the gear so you try to do if it's possible use just a single pair the other way to do it is to kind of do what's known as a residual ratio um, you can use basically use this method for two or more gears so you compute all the final all the gear ratios but the final you kind of come up with some numbers and this is a procedure that's usually used in the book um, we would basically use kind of a slightly different approach which is given as alternate solution here so what I'll basically do is cancel out the the factors that's common between the numerator and the denominator so if I want uh, 100 over 25 I basically cancel divide 100 by 25 so that becomes 4 is to 1 so basically make the denominator and numerator so that they no, lo no longer have any common factor so that will give you the smallest number and then what you can do is like multiply those numbers by a common factor to get the actual gear ratio so let's try to do that the first example is the input speed is 3450 rpm the output speed is 650 
and the maximum number of teeth n max is 150 see if you can actually solve this so i'm going to Okay, so now if you multiply, take, divide uh, 3450 by 650, um, you can factor out, so you get 69 by 13. So since you want a minimum of 16 teeth, let me write that. Um, so the train value is 69 by 13. So since you want minimum of 16 teeth, you can multiply the numerator and denominator by two, that'll give you 138 by 26. Let's try to design a gear train. Uh, input speed of 1150, output speed of 24 to 28. So you're gonna first try 24, uh, try to solve it, and then we'll try 25, just to make, make it more interesting. Okay, so if you wanna solve for uh, 24 teeth, so if you look at 1150 divided by 24, that basically becomes 23 times 25 divided by 12. Right? For the outer gear, so 24 RPM, so you get 1150 by 24, that's 23 times 25 divided by 12. So what you're going to do with the 12 is think about 12 as being four times three, and then we're going to write it as 23 divided by three times 25 divided by four. So now what you do is you can basically think of this as being the ratio that we did in the previous step. Uh, you can basically multiply the numerator and denominator by the same number and that will basically allow you to get any gear ratio you want. You can also multiply this by one number and same number here. You can multiply 23 and four by a different number and then you can get uh, uh, different values. In this case, we're gonna multiply uh, this thing by six Multiply by six for both, you get 138 by 18 times 150 by 24. So this is going to be the gear ratio that you'll select to. Uh, the first stage would be 138 by 150, uh, sorry, 138 by uh, 18. The second stage would be 150 by 24. Let's now try for 24 RPM. Okay, for output speed of 24 RPM, so you do the same thing. Um, the difference being, um, you're going to basically be dividing what, to 1150 by 25. So if you look at 1150 by 25, this actually becomes 23 times two over one. Um, so what you can do here is basically try to factor this out. So you can think of uh, this as being eight times one times 23 uh, over four. So you can basically come up with any number you want. So essentially what I did was think of this multiplying here by four. So this becomes 23 by four and then four twos are eight divided by one. Now I'm going to multiply this further. Uh, you can again multiply by any number, but then we're going to try it as 144 over 18 times 115 by 20. Right, so th then if I do this gear ratio, if I kind of do the overall calculation, I'll get the final uh, gear ratio is gonna be 1150 by 25. So this kind of should conclude our presentation. Uh, in the next video, we'll basically think about how you'll actually um, design the gear itself. So in terms of choosing the face width, the diameter, the material, the center distance, so actually doing a full design for a gear. Thank you.